Hello and welcome to this edition of Dr. K's Psychobabble. Today we're going to be taking a look at a, an illusion that all of us have probably experienced called after image. And I'll be explaining what is happening in the retina that allows us to experience this optical illusion. So I'm going to use an example and I'm going to need your participation here. This is a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to have you actually participate in this experiment with me. So bear with me. Let's go to the slides and take a look at our American flag. Now what's wrong with this? All the colors are wrong. I'll explain that in just a minute. But what I want you to do to participate in my little experiment right now is I want you to stare at that image. And I want you to look around. You're going to stare at it for one solid minute. And so get your... Get yourself ready. And I'm going to time this. I was getting my little clock ready here. I want you to stare at that for one minute. Okay, ready? Go. Stay with me. We need the Jeopardy theme. Keep staring. Ten more seconds. All right. So did you see it? If you stared at that image for that full minute, and then I changed the slide, and what you saw was a white square, what you should have seen was a rightly colored, just for a moment, you would have seen a rightly colored American flag, red, white, and blue. So what the heck is that? None of that was in your vision. You were looking at green, black, and a dark mustard yellow. What was that? That was the illusion of after effect. So we're going to take a little bit of time looking at the neurology in the eye and explaining how this process happens. So let's take a look at the eye. Here's a typical eyeball. And here's the image that I presented to you, this wrongly colored American flag. Now, don't know if you ever heard about how the eye works, but as an image in the real world enters into the eye, it goes through the lens, flips upside down and sideways, and is portrayed upside down and sideways on the back of your retina. So, Truthfully, the colors that you see, the sort of mustard yellow, black, and green, are the colors that are exhibited on the back of the eye. Now we're looking at this. Now we're going to take a little close look at the retina itself and the neurons, the specialized neurons that are involved in processing visual information. So let's take a little close up here. Here is our retina. And the retina is built up primarily of two kinds of photoreceptors. The first one is cones, and there's a lot of those, and those are specifically geared toward picking up edges and black and white. The periphery of our eyeball, of the inside of our eyeball, the periphery of our retina, is almost entirely cones. Uh, I'm sorry, it's almost entirely um, rods, and therefore, our, our peripheral vision is much more sensitive to light and dark. The cones, I slipped it out just a second ago, that make up the color receptors of our, um, of our vision 
are centered around the fovea. And the fovea is the area of the eye where, we, where the focal point is. Now, there's a lot of cones in that area. So there's a lot of cone activity uh, responsible for what we're seeing. So I'm going to introduce to you a theory that explains why when we look at this, what is a negative image, it's the opposite colors of the regular flag. Why, when our eyes stare at this for a while, do we then see the right color when it's replaced with white? We're gonna kind of explain that. So here we have our flag is being imprinted on that retina. And let's take a look at opponent process theory. Opponent process theory proposes that the cones in our retina respond to the light that is out there in the real world and that every color is paired with another color and the primary antagonistic colors are red versus green, blue versus yellow, and black versus white. Now, all the shades are in there, but what actually is going on when my cones are registering green information? Not only are they processing that there's something green out there, but they are also suppressing the processing of red. It's antagonistic to any red signals, so it's suppressing those. And what starts to happen as we stare at something, and I had you stare at that flag, and you were, you were focusing that on your fovea in the, back of your, um, in the back of your retina, you were focusing on that, those rods began to fatigue. They're looking at that color, and, and, and neurons within the eye are easily fatigued. They get tired quickly. I mean, I've got it. You know, I'm sending green, whatever, and they're getting tired. And so their suppressing ability is, is kind of just holding on. The green is suppressing the red. And when I remove the green color and replace it with white, the red comes charging forth, and, the, and it just, for a moment... It sends the signal, like wherever that green was, you start to see red. And so that's the explanation of this image that we see when we saw the green, black, and yellow flag turn into a red, white, and blue. So what we have here is our green, black, and yellow flag. And when our neurons become fatigued with this and they no longer... They can hold it for as long as you want, but they're getting fatigued in terms of holding on to that, um, uh, suppressing the red. And as soon as I replace it with a white background, it becomes our flag, red, white, and blue. Now, the opposing colors, the antagonistic colors, are represented on a color wheel. And so you can see here that opposite of yellow is blue, opposite of red is green, and opposite of white is black. And so those, those are kind of the ways in which I was able to trick your mind into revealing a properly colored flag, which is never there by activating this antagonistic system within our eye. Now, we don't understand why this came about, why our eye is made that way to be able to um, respond to after images like that and see the opposite. You can actually, if you have a computer program that processes um, photos like Photoshop or something like that, you can actually go into the tools there and invert the colors you get of any picture get any picture, turn it into its negative, and do this experiment yourself. You can actually, you know, make a slideshow and just have it on a, you know, the, uh, on a white background, and then just go to a white background, and you'll see the color in its, you'll see the picture in its natural colors. So it's actually a really neat thing that you can do at home with your computer and any picture that you want. So, I 
this is kind of a short little time that we've had together to, to tell you about uh, this interesting aspect of the way our eye works and the concept of after image. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you subscribe down below and I'll see you next time.